Right, in this last video, we're going to address uh, scene organization. <clears throat> and uh, I just want to point out that I went and created instances of all my uh, legs. So pretty much anything that I do to one is going to do to any of them. And it's usually a good practice uh, that if you know that you're going to be, if you're going to have uh, pretty much set replicas of one thing just to use instances instead of copies. Again, because if you need to, for some reason, make any changes to any of them, you only have to address one and not all of them individually. Um, so let's start by creating some layers, or at least one layer for this object. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the whole thing. And uh, again, you can create layers uh, here under Create a New uh, Layer. Uh, I'm actually going to click, click on this one that says create a new layer and assign selected objects. So it automatically assigns what I had selected into this layer. And uh, I can just kind of click on it and give it a name. So furniture, the case for this one. Save that. And uh, <clears throat> again, the nice thing of having the the uh, layers is that you can go ahead and hide something that you don't need at the moment. Um, you also have the uh, uh, freeze it and kind of have it in this kind of wireframe mode that you can't really interact with or we'll just freeze it and um, have it in a shaded form um, so that, that's, that's really good <laughs> but another, th another thing that I like to uh, do uh, it's basically create some sort of control for this object and the reason for that is because it's kind of made up of a bunch of uh, you know a bunch of different little things and if I were to um, try to move it or maybe rotate it, it it'll be a little bit difficult because each thing has its own uh, orientation and uh, <coughs> it'll kind of move and rotate based on its own axis and not on the collective <coughs> So one thing uh, that I like to do is create a control for it. Um, and I'm going to do that by creating a spline that kind of resembles the shape of my couch here. And I'm going to use my outliner to be able to group it. <coughs> so uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a control with a curve. I'm going to be using the Vezier uh, curve tool. Um, just gonna start here and again this doesn't need to be perfect just making sure I create something that resembles the shape of it I can always go in there and just kind of fix my, uh, oops, my control vertices so it, it looks a little bit more like the shape of it. this one over here into a corner so something like this will be will work fine and uh, again um, uh, usually when you create um, a curve uh, it's going to start at, uh, at the uh, at the floor basically so it's, it's at zero right now <coughs> so it's basically uh, the control, the couch is pretty much standing on it. So I'm just going to go ahead and select my control and actually call it uh, CTRL and furniture. Okay, just so I know what it is. <coughs> and again, the outliner, I'll be able to see that my spline control is here. So the next thing I want to do is basically select everything except for my control. <coughs> and now I want to 
uh, in my outliner, I want to middle click, uh, middle mouse click, and just drag everything into my control furniture right here. <clears throat> and it's basically uh, a sign. It basically grouped everything into my uh, control right here. So if I select my control and I want to move everything, everything's going to move. Oh, except for this. Apparently, I didn't select everything, so I'm just going to go ahead and make sure that it's grouped within this. All right, so now it's going to work. So if I select my furniture control, it's basically going to be able to move everything at once, rotate everything at once, and if I need to, also scale everything at once. And again, you have to kind of make sure that it's at the at the at the floor and the object kind of standing on it. Otherwise, it's not going to be scaling properly. So now that it's uh, it has this control, I should be able to again. If I have a uh, a room layout and I need to move this around and make it uh, go to whatever I need to go, uh, everything's going to move along with it. And again, I can always kind of come back here and maybe fix it a little bit so it just kind of follows the shape of, of it more. But again, it's, like, it's more like uh, it doesn't need to do that. The purpose of it is to just work as a control so it can move everything at once. <coughs> um, I like using splines to be to group things and make that into controls rather than grouping everything into the axis of one object. Uh, and again, it's mostly because uh, <clears throat> in case I need to scale it, uh, just selecting the control is pretty much going to uh, bring everything uniformly and it's not dependent on one of these objects. Um, another good practice, uh, especially if you already have placed your object where you need to, where it needs to be, it's basically uh, freeze transform. Um, the object and by doing that again notice that right now uh, position wise on X it's here and on Z it's here but if I freeze transform it it basically turns everything to zero so if for some reason I need to uh, either move it or for some reason scale it and then I kinda change my mind about it <coughs> I can always go back into here and change all this back to the default and it's if I wouldn't have done anything. So it just kind of allows you to go back to that default uh, that you were before you started. And you can always freeze transform your settings anytime you want. Um, okay, so this is uh, the end of the uh, how to model the uh, piece of um, um, modern furniture. Uh, and I hope this was uh, informative. Um, thank you for watching.